Hi, and thanks for watching. Today, we're going to be looking at human interaction with surface processes or human interaction with the rock cycle. There are five pieces of information we've given to help you on this. The first one here is this video that, that you're currently looking at. Uh, then we'll go on to past exam questions. We'll then show you the information you need to, to cover. So we'll give you two sets of notes here, two sample answers, and then at the very end, we have a little short test for you there. Okay, so let's start by looking at past exam questions. If you look at this document, <clears throat> human interaction with surface processes or human interaction with the rock cycle, has come up every year as a question, as a long question, as a part long question, except for 2016. So let's have a quick look. If you look at the 2019 question, human interaction with surface processes, human activity impacts on surface process, and the statement reference to one the following. The one we cover is river processes. Okay, so human interaction with river. That was a 2019 question. If you look at the 2018 question, it's human interaction with the rock cycle. And the one we cover here is geothermal energy. You only need to do one of these. So the one we cover is geothermal energy. Go back to 2017, and it's human interaction with surface processes, rivers. 2016, the only year no question was asked on this topic. 2015, rock cycle, geothermal energy, and so on and so forth, and etc. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at both the river, human surface, human interaction with the surface processes in terms of rivers, and then human interaction with the rock cycle. Okay. So here are the notes for human interaction with the rock cycle. I'm just going to go through these quickly with you, just to give you an idea as, uh, as to what's involved. My recommendation here would be maybe as I'm, as I'm speaking, after a minute or two, just stop me and see if you can write your own notes based upon what, what I've said. So human interaction with the rock cycle and the example we're choosing is geothermal energy. Geothermal energy is the heat generated and stored in the earth. It's supplied to the ground from two main sources, magma near the earth's surface or solar energy that's trapped by the ground. So that, that's energy supplied by the, by the sun. The earth's surface in terms of solar geothermal energy, the earth's surface acts as a large collector. Stored energy is warm enough for individual home heating systems. So this is not large scale. This is on an individual basis. Where it's crustal geothermal energy is where molten magma rises near the Earth's surface. And in areas like Iceland, volcanic areas like Iceland, the heat from that magma is so substantial that they can use it as a source of energy. The main advantages of geothermal energy, it's good for the environment. Um, you're not burning fossil fuels and no greenhouse emissions are produced. And secondly, it's reliable. It's a constant reliable source of energy, unlike, say, solar or wind power, which, which can fluctuate dependent on conditions. The main disadvantage is the high cost involved in setting it up. Right, I'm going to look at a, a case study of geothermal energy production. In this case, we're just going to look at Iceland. So it's cost-effective renewable energy source for Iceland. It's it, they, they have it because molten magma near the surface heats the groundwater supply, or the underwater groundwater supply. That water is superheated to 200 degrees Celsius. They drill wells down to extract the water. Warm water is piped then to industries and to greenhouses. And the steam from the water is used to generate electricity, which is used for central heating in, in people's homes. As a consequence of geothermal energy, Reykjavik is one of the cleanest cities in the world. Uh, and it also is a major tourist attraction because the hot water uh, provides a source for springs and pools. Okay. So that gives you a good idea as to what's involved with the rock cycle, human interaction with the rock cycle. They're just the notes on it. Now I'm going to have a look at human interaction with surface processes. And in this case, I'm going to choose rivers. So I'm going to talk about the Three Gorges Dam here. So human interaction with surface processes, rivers. Example of human interaction with surface processes is the Three Gorges Dam in the River Yangtze in China. It's a massive hydroelectric dam, built to and it was also built to control flooding. Previous to this, floods in the Yangtze had killed more than 300,000 people in the 20th century, and many people had died from starvation because the flooding destroyed the crops that were being grown on the floodplains. Most serious floods were in 1998, when 
14 million people were made homeless and 20 billion worth of dollars dam of damage was caused the building of the dam has a number of positive effects um it's estimated that it'll protect 15 million people and 1.5 million acres of farmland are now no longer vulnerable to flooding water from the river irrigates crops supplies the, supplies water to millions of people and it produces huge amounts of hydroelectric power as well the negative effects one million people had to leave their homes so it had to flood a large area the reservoir for the dam is over 600 kilometers in length so they had to flood a large area land and they had to move a lot of people as a consequence one billion tons of wastewater released into the river every year and this pollution tends to get trapped behind the reservoir and salt water has started to creep up the river causing fish to be killed also alluvium is now being deposited alluvium that soil that's that's rich for for, for growing crops is being deposited in the artificial reservoir and that's now building up behind the dam and, and, that, and that, that's creating difficulties as well and the last one is that because the river no longer floods the farmland is not getting any alluvium soil. So on, the, on one level, no long, the, the river no longer flooding is great, but the problem that creates then is that the farmland is no longer getting this rich alluvium soil. Okay, so that gives you the notes. That's, that's just a run through the notes on human interaction with surface process. And then the last two things we've got are the 2015 answer and answer to 2015 question 3c so human interaction with the rock cycle and geothermal energy so you've got your answer there you can read through that yourself but it's built substantially on the notes that i've just gone through there and then this is question 1c from the 2017 exam paper human interaction with surface processes and in this case i looked at river processes okay the last thing that's here is a short little test so my recommendation for you would be watch the video make sure you're au fait with the past exam questions but they're, they're they're all pretty standard to be honest you have the notes there if you need them run through the sample answers yourself and then if you want you can do a short little test there okay thanks for watching